Well, hello from the Scottish Highlands again. I'm sitting in the van here because I've got a little bit of an expedition going on. Um, last year I had a few days, I went to Sky and I did a series of videos, um, three videos in Sky. I'll put the link up there. It was fantastic and a wonderful time. But anyway, I've managed to clear my diary again. So we're mid-February now and I've managed to clear my diary, which means I've got three days and I'm going to drive to somewhere that I've never really been very often and that's called Athent. So it's just at the northwest coast, um, just further north than Ullapool. So the plan of attack is I'm going to have three days in the van. Now, unfortunately, the dog's not coming with me this time because she's got an eye infection, so she's not too happy. Look at her face, she's not happy at all. But anyway, so I'm going to have to leave her, unfortunately. So I'm going up there on my own, and I'm going to spend three days driving around to show you the best locations for photography in Athens. So come and join me and let's see the best locations of landscape photos in Assin. So the plan is to jump in the van, I'm going to head all the way up past Loch Ness up to Inverness Way, just before that I'm going to turn left and then what we're going to do is we're going to head up past Ullapool and then we're going to start getting into this beautiful countryside and my, the thing is with Assen is, is what you've got is this kind of undulating sort of landscape and then all of a sudden you get these big peaks like Stack Polly and Sylvan and all these big peaks just stick out from nowhere and it's just an unusual landscape that you don't see anywhere else. Even in Scotland it's quite unusual, we've got lots of mountains around here but we don't have that flatness and then these big peaks and they're like big monoliths of rock in front of you on these flat sort of plains so it's, it's a fantastic little location. Now the plan is I'm going to head up there and the first day I'm going to go over and we're going to find Widow Falls and then we're going to have a look at Ardvec Castle and stay around that area first up. And then I think the second day what we're going to do is we're going to move on up and we're going to go to Split Rock and potentially Store Lighthouse and then probably heading over maybe Clash Nessie Falls, something like that. So they're the locations that I'm going to go for there. And then in my third video, we're going to head up and the plan of attack is the weather's looking OK. It's kind of sunshine and showers for the Sunday. Uh, so the plan is I want to get some altitude and get some height. So we're going to go and walk up Stack Polly and have some nice shots over there. Cool. OK, so let's get in the van, get my kit together and let's head on up. Headed out of all the pool and just coming up north about five minutes out then you start seeing these locks in front of you on the A835 and then as you get up a little bit further just in the distance is Stack Polly which is just over there which is just in a bit of light and it's actually looking gorgeous in fact I wish I was over a bit closer to go and take a shot of that but I'm going to carry on heading north because I think the light's going to be okay all weekend so I'm going to head up north to another location Okay, I've driven a few more minutes and then I take the turn in on the A894 which is the, still the NC500 but instead of going to Loch Inver you kind of turn right, it's more of the scenic route and if you drive about five minutes after that turn in you come and you see this nice big sort of open lock and, and then you get down and then you get into this gorge section here 
and there is a little car parking space there's not much space but you can kind of get your car in there and this gets me at the start of a 10 minute walk up this gorge which will get me to the Wailing Widow Falls and this is such a great location now I've timed it quite well because it's quite it's just after midday now and the sun is relatively high but it's still February so it's not like right in the sky and what I'm hoping is by getting that little bit of height it's going to come on round in front of me here and light up that gorge you can still see bits of light just trying to creep into the gorge behind me so I'm hoping as we walk on up that light will come round and it should get me some beautiful light in the gorge as well now this is not a particularly easy walk and, and what I might do is I might get into the river a little bit just to get some good compositions in the water there. So I've banged on the wellies here, although I've pulled them out of the van and I've caught it on the bumper and I've got a bloody ripping one of them right here, look at that. Um, so I might end up with a bit of wet sock jobs, but it's worth it anyway. Um, so I'm going to carry on. Let's go and see if we can get some good compositions. Yeah, just watch out that first bit of the track there's been a rock fall there obviously a couple of years ago or something but it's a little bit rough and the track is not very well pronounced i'm actually glad i got the wellies on because i had to go in the river a little bit just to get out of the way some of the old big steps uh, i think the track itself should get better as we go further up the burn here um, but yeah just be careful of that first bit uh, i think in the summer this could be busy and could get a little bit boggy and messy so uh, yeah I reckon wellies are a good idea here Well, that went too far at all, if I'm being honest with you. <laughs> I read in some of the guides, it was like some awful track that's going to take you ages. But honestly, it's a few, it's less than a couple of minutes. It, it, it doesn't take you longer at all from the car park. And then you get this beauty, which is just so impressive. You know what? It feels like Iceland or somewhere like that. It's such a massive drop. And where else would you get a drop like this? And, and like nobody else be around you you know normally if you was in Iceland it'd be absolutely heaving by now on a beautiful day like this it's just me here in fact I'm, I'm lying because it wasn't just me here there was <laughs> there was a wedding party coming to shoot obviously some wedding shots here which is a bit odd because if I'm being honest with you it's called Wailing Widow Falls for a reason so if I was the groom I'd be a tad worried if I was in <laughs> Now the falls gets its name from uh, a little story, a folk tale really. I don't know whether this is true or not, but uh, the story goes that there was a young huntsman out hunting in a thunderstorm and he chased the deer and he chased the deer over the falls and died. And his mother came out to look for him and when she found him at the bottom of the falls, she just realised that she couldn't live her life any longer and threw herself off the falls as well to her death. And apparently when there's a thunderstorm or stormy weather you can hear her howls as she wails as she falls down to the death below. Can you hear something? Okay so I've got a bit low down to the river and I've got what I really think is a wonderful composition. It's just so fantastic here. What a wonderful place. I mean oh uh, it definitely feels like Iceland, you know, with those big waterfalls and yet, uh, yeah, like I say, there's nobody about. So what I've done is I've got the burn coming in and it's coming in very obviously from the right. I've got a bit of a drop and that gives me this nice tail and that's going to lead the eye up. And actually what I've done is I've put the waterfall, not right in the middle, but kind of off centre a little bit. It's almost a rule of thirds and uh, yeah, you know, I'm not a big fan of the rule of thirds. Uh, there is so much more out there and sometimes I feel people crowbar compositions to fit that dreaded rule of thirds um, but actually when it works it's worthwhile using it and this particular location it does kind of work if I put that waterfall on that first third 
So uh, yeah, it, it can be ignored a lot, but sometimes it is quite useful, but I'm not a massive fan. So what I've done is I've gone and put the uh, camera on the tripod, I'll flip you around, uh, and I'm in portrait orientation here. Why is it always on a sketchy, dodgy rock? Look at that, right dodgy again. If, uh, if you hear some wailing, it's because I've knocked the camera in. Um, and what I've done is I've gone and put a polarizer on there as well. That's going to give me some big contrast between those dark water and the bright, white, fast flowing water. And then what I've got is I've got this nice little burn coming in. Let me come down a bit. This nice burn coming in here with this drop. And then that leads the eye up to the waterfall itself. If I pan up to the top of the waterfall, you'll see the sky is very bright here now. It's really quite harsh. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to do a few things. I'm going to have to bracket this just to get that sky exposed because this dark gorge is really quite dark. So I'll do a bracket. And also, because these boulders are very close to me in the foreground, unfortunately, I'm going to have to focus stack as well. So I'm probably going to have about five or six shots here just to stitch together. Um, but I will focus stack. I'm going to focus very close, intermediate, and then just next to the waterfall, not on the water itself. And then I'm going to probably take a, a shot, just a bracketed dark shot for the sky as well. OK, I'm going to have a go at this. I'll stitch them all together. And if this shot works, here's the image. everybody great to see you i'm back at ardvec castle here for the sunrise i didn't actually stay here the night i kind of moved up a little bit because i wanted some 4g just to do some work but anyway i've managed to drive back i was only about a 15 minutes drive away so got up early nice and early sunrise is about 7 55 but as you can see in the background here i've got the castle itself and i've got these beautiful pink clouds in the fog in the top there so i've got these beautiful pink clouds just coming over the mountain there so what i'm going to do is I'm going to take some shots first off just with this pink cloud I've got no light on the mountains or the castle yet so we're probably going to get a couple of shots for us to compare uh, to see which one works for us um, but yeah we're going to go for this one so uh, what I've done is I've set myself up in portrait orientation now the shot itself is a bit of a given if I'm being honest with you but it's about that foreground again just to give me that depth to it so what I've found is I've come to this sort of peninsula here just in front of the castle and there's some beautiful rocks here just lying in the water now I went to pull on a polarizer and um, but when I put that on I really did lose that glare on the, the water but the problem is, is there's a little bit of reflection it's a shame because there's a bit of wind if there was no wind it would have been an absolute beautiful shot and um, so because there's a little bit of wind I've decided to put a really uh, six stop filter on just to slow it down a bit and give it some character to the water um, but by putting on the polarizer I lost that a little bit so I've taken the polarizer back off um, but I mean it is just looking spectacular there's just me here nobody else around and this view is just wow or inspiring it really is it's just such a nice shot and I'm so lucky because I've got that bank of cloud because actually when I look around there's not much cloud apart from where I want it so thank you the gods are shining on me today cool okay I'm going to show you the composition um, so let's show you what I'm doing 
Okay, so what I've done, I've just parked in the main car park. You just walk along the track. The track does take you kind of to a little sort of peninsula that takes you out actually onto the castle. You can't quite get to the castle. You kind of have to jump over this wall, the old wall there. Um, but I've come up a little bit, and what I've done is I've found these rocks. I'm going to turn you around, and I'll show you what I'm looking at. So here's my camera here, and you can see I've gone into portrait orientation. And what I've got is I've got these rocks in the foreground here, and then I've got this lovely sort of pinky reflection it's a bit windy so it's not quite a nice clear reflection so I've slowed this down just to get a little bit of a hint of the colour in the water and then obviously the castle and the mountain there as well so that's the shot that is working really well okay I'm going to go and fire one off now I'm probably going to have to focus stack this I've just had a look and when I focus on the rocks in the foreground the, the castle itself is slightly out of focus so what I'm going to do just to be sure and it's usual is always be sure always be certain is focus stack so I'm going to focus stack and uh, just in case I don't not need it um, and then uh, I'm going to probably stitch them all together a bit later on. So cool. Now if this shot works, it's a beautiful shot and that light is just looking really good. I'm so excited. If it works, here's the image. So Ardvec Castle actually got a bit of a check in history, it really has. It's seen a lot of sort of sieges and murders and all sorts of stuff going on. Um, it was built in the late 15th century, but it's uh, about 100 years later, it was it was sort of added to and sort of really built up. And it was part of the MacLeods, and the MacLeods were like the clan that kind of dominated the area of Assint itself. Up until sort of 1672, when the Mackenzies came in, and they did 14-day siege here and sieged the castle and then took over, and then that wiped out the MacLeods from Ascent itself. In fact, it's, there's a few stories about ghosts and sort of things. I think um, McLeod's daughter, um, she sort of died in the lock um, and she's a ghost is sort of heard around the area and that's because because she, she knew her dad was going to lose the castle to the Mackenzies. Um, she made a pact with the devil and married the devil and then she killed herself in the lock because she couldn't help being with the devil. I don't know where they come up with these stories. But anyway, apparently you can hear a wailing in the night sometimes. And the castle itself, unfortunately, nature took its course and it got struck by lightning. And um, when it got struck by lightning, it obviously burnt down and then became a ruin like it is. Great, now the sun is coming up. Um, it's on the mountain there as well now. So I've not got any light on me yet. I'm in this quandary because I ain't having a cup of tea yet and I feel like the van's only over here. Do I have time for that light to creep down? Because I want some light on the castle to boil the kettle. I don't know. I'll tell you later on. Um, but yeah, that light is really coming down now. So what I want now, I've got an absolute, that was an absolute beautiful shot. Um, but what I want to do is I want to get a shot of the light on the castle as well. So I'm going to wait a bit longer and then hopefully this sun will just come round a little bit more and then we can get some actual light on the castle. The pinkness has gone out the sky a little bit, but I still think some light down here in the foreground will still make for a spectacular shot. So just had that bit of jeopardy. There's a bit of light coming on the castle, but the question is, did I get time to make a coffee? And the answer is, yes, I did. Oh, needing that desperately. Oh, look at that light now coming. So I'm going to grab another one with that beautiful light on it. Wow, look at that. It's amazing. Where's we going to put my coffee? I bet you I'll spill it.
Wow. <laughs> Both of them shots were absolutely amazing. The light was just, oh dear, so beautiful. It really is. And uh, there's, I've just completely on my own. There's nobody, I've just got the water laughing at the shore. Talk about the therapy. Uh, wow. I'm just absolutely gobsmacked. Thank you. It was just brilliant. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Um, so that's my first episode of this Ascent series and in this episode obviously we've done the, the, the Wailing Widow Falls and uh, and this castle here, Ardbeck Castle. Um, this afternoon there's a bit of rain coming in so the, I've got all day until about three o'clock so we're going to head on over and we're going to possibly go to Split Rock and uh, possibly store lighthouse and maybe another big waterfall in the next episode. So and then I think the day after we're going to do Stack Polly. So, Keep watching. I'll post another video probably next week and we'll post them the next three weeks. You'll probably get about three videos from this series. Um, but definitely come to this place. It's absolutely stunning. A little bit off the beaten track, although there's a little bit of uh, buzz about the area nowadays in terms of landscape photography. But it's still not quite like Sky and Glencoe and other places like that. It's still quite isolated. So uh, get yourself here before the hordes start coming because it's such a wonderful location. It really is. So thanks so much for watching. As usual, give me a thumbs up. It's always appreciated. And if you really like my content, head to the subscribe button and click on that little button. And if you click on the bell, you'll get a notification every time I post again. Well, I've had a wonderful first day. I'm so delighted. Let's hope the rest of the Ascent trip goes this well. Um, and we'll see you hopefully in the next video.